Hello everyone, thank you for coming. Um, today I'll describe an unsupervised model, for instance, level subcategorization acquisition. Before we start, I'm going to briefly describe the task at hand and um, some introduction information about what subcategorization frames are. So what is a subca subcat frame? A subcategorization frame is essentially a uh, set of arguments to a predicate. <laughs> and more specifically, it's a set of grammatical relations that describe a predicate and its arguments. For example, Jack gave Susan chocolate. The predicate is gave, or give is a, in, in, in lemmatized form, and the um, arguments are uh, a subject, an indirect object, and a direct object. So subcat frames are used throughout NLP in, in tasks like parsing, um, uh, word sense disambiguation, um, uh, uh, machine translation, and so on. Um, and the task here is to acquire these frames to be used later on down the NLP pipeline. Sorry. <laughs> so how do the current systems acquire subcategorization frames? They generally rely on a trained parser that manually, um, that, that require manual annotated data and that, can, that, that will extract the um, grammatical relations for us. And then we use some rules to extract those SCFs and they generally work at type level instead of instance level. So what do I mean by type level and instance level? <coughs> oh, for sake. Um, so type level um, works by taking the entire corpus and generating a lexicon, generating a dictionary of, of, of every verb um, and its, um, its uh, distribution of subcategorization frames that this verb occurs in along with a measure of either relative frequency or probability. So for example, in this table here, we have the word run, and we have different subcat frames that occur with this word run, and different probabilities that this could occur in. Um, and generally with the system, um, the, uh, a parser would use a system like, would use an output like this by selecting the most common subcat for that particular verb. Instance level, on the other hand, they assign you look at all the instances of a verb and you assign a subcategorization frame to each instance depending on the surrounding context. We try to infer um, a particular subcat. So our system predicts subcategorization frames at an instance level by surrounding the context, by, by looking at the surrounding context and, and, um, and therefore can be more precise for systems that require context like um, uh, parsing or word sense disambiguation, and <clears throat> it, it treats subcat, the subcat as an, um, an unsupervised clustering prob problem and does not use parsing or any subcategorization frame annotations or rules, and therefore it's domain independent. Because in the current systems, if you train it in one domain and move to another domain, it has, it will, it, there will be a big performance hit, and therefore you have to do some sort of a machine, um, some sort of domain transfer. So in this presentation, I'll give you a basic overview of our model, and then I'll give you more details about um, the, the specific algorithms that we're using, followed by an evaluation, both intrinsic and extrinsic. <clears throat> so we basically use a Markov random field, an undirected graphical model, and this, M this MRF will model the syntactic similarity of verb instances in the input text, and then we apply map inference to predict clusters. If verb instances share the same, share the same clusters, then they're likely to share the same subcategorization frame. So to illustrate this, we got the input text that has already been part of speech tagged. We, oops, sorry. Um, we identified the verb instances in the text, and for each node in the MRF, we assign a verb instance. Then, looking at the surrounding context of the verb instances, we connect these verbs based on their similarity. So each edge will have a score determining how similar these two verbs are, or how dis dissimilar they are. And then we run map inference, and we cluster these verb instances. The ones that share the same verb cluster are likely to share the same subcategorization frame. Now the question is, how do we measure similarity? 
So we use a binary feature representation that is extracted for each token in our, in our input text. And we look at the window of surrounding words and we concatenate all binary vectors in the window and then we use cosine similarity measure. So in this equation here, it's weighted cosine similarity, but for the basic vanilla model, we don't use any weights. And I'll, I'll explain later when, weights, when we, we start using weighted, well, weighted similarity. So what kind of features do we look for? We look very at, at very um, surface level features. For example, word, word stems, surrounding post tags, surrounding words, surrounding limitized words, and distances between the next noun, the next adjective, the next prep, um, and, and things like that. So we don't use any deep features like power, um, like um, grammatical relations. <clears throat> now, looking at the model, uh, the parameters for our model, each node in our MRF has uh, local potentials, so has an array of local potentials. And they, in the vanilla model, we don't use these at all. Well, I'll explain later when we, when we do get to use them. And for every two pairs of nodes, there's um, uh, pairwise potential. And essentially, that's where our similarity measure is used. Inference. We use, uh, Mac, uh, we essentially, but to find the clusters, we solve for maximum a posteriori um, inference by map decoding. We use the message, pa message passing algorithm for linear programming by Sontag et al. Um, the M MPLP iteratively computes the higher upper bounds on the map objective. And to the, the algorithm is, is, is um, polynomial to the number of edges in the graph, so it's relatively fast, but we still prune our model by taking out all the edges that are somewhat am ambiguous. So we keep the very positive edges and the very negative edges, and that tends to give us both a runtime, um, a runtime performance um, inc uh, increase and uh, an accuracy performance increase. All right, so that was the basic, basic model, just the pure Markov random field. You, this, this essentially will only use instance level information. But we know from previous systems, if we look at type level inform information, it's extremely useful. Because subcategorization phrases don't just occur randomly. They are highly correlated with the with our verb type, with the, with the, with the verb types. Um, in fact, they're so correlated, the distribution is almost Zipfian. So it makes sense to also use verb type information as well. So what we do is we do some pre-clustering before we use, before we use the, um, the, the MRF, and that's essentially to cluster the verb instances according to verb types. So what I mean by verb types is um, different instances of the word, for, of the verb, let's say, eight, um, we all be clustered together. That, that's the goal, and how similar they are. And only, not only that eight and maybe eight will be clustered together as well, because they might have similar con uh, subcat frames as well. So uh, some, I mean, similar syntactic context as well. So what we do is we bias our local potential that I mentioned earlier based on the verb type information that we get from this pre-cluster. We also introduce the notion of equivalence classes. We add nodes in our MRF um, that represent similar syntactic features between the verb instances. More specifically, we look at part of speech context. So the idea is that um, we want to we want to bias our model to group together verb instances that share very similar post tag context. Um, and I'll, I'll explain this, I'll, I'll illustrate this with this example. So this is our original MRF. <clears throat> we assign verb instances to every node in our MRF. And what we do, um, we, we, again, we, um, we, we create the edges, the sim how similar they are. But we also introduce two um, equivalence classes nodes. So each one of these represent a specific post tag context. And then we connect the nodes that share this post tag context. And what happens is that um, these green edges are much more heavily weighted than the black edges. And what happens is when we cluster, they, they, it will introduce some bias into the MRF. And hopefully that bias will increase, increase our accuracy. So we evaluated our model using two types of evaluation, intrinsic and extrinsic. The intrinsic evaluation, we use two 
two gold standard models from two different domains so that we can verify our model works well across two different domains. And we also used extrinsic evaluations um, to see how our, our um, task do in, a, in, a, in an independent NLP task. And what we did, we used verb similarity and vector space models. <clears throat> so the intrinsic evaluation, we have two gold annotated data sets, labor, legislation, and environment. And we compared against two baselines, most frequent class and random clustering. And we used two commonly used um, uh, measurements, the greedy M21, so that's a mapping, greedy many to one, it's a mapping based, mapping based um, measurement, and the V measure, which is, a, is an entropy based. And what we do is we, we take a 5% held out sample from each data set, we run the model with the, um, under baselines on, with 40 samples, and then we calculate VN1 measure, and then we run one way ANOVA. So the results shows that our model substantially beat the both baselines. And we could also break our model down to two uh, separate components, the MRF and the pre-clustering only. So the MRF shows us how our model, how our model does using only instance level information. And the pre-clustering pre shows us how, it, how the model works with verb type information only. And we can see that our full model benefits from having both MRF, and pre, uh, MRF only and pre-clustering only. And, um, and um, uh, as, as you can see in, in the third row. <clears throat> now, the extrinsic evaluation. So the idea is to, to use the model in, a, in, a, in another NLP task. And we used, um, we tried to predict the, the similarity of two verb pairs in a, in, a, in, a vector, in vector space. So we have a data set of 143 verbs and to, com comprised from 122 unique verb lemmas. And uh, a similarity score is assigned for each pair um, from, uh, from by, by, comparing two, by comparing verb instance pairs from by native English speakers. So that's our gold standard. And we have two baselines, a standard VSM based on lexical um, collocations. So that's, uh, we, we simply use a, two, a size two window of the most frequent 5,000 nouns in the Google Ngram corpus. And we also, for, that, for the second baseline, we used a fully supervised parser to extract those SCFs and then use them as features to predict the verb similarity. So our parser here and our, our um, SCF extraction system is trained on the Wall Street Journal. Um, so again, we run our model to get the, the binary vector representation. We run the model 5,000 times and uh, each, each run it has 122 verb types. And, we, and the output of each run is, 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 is transformed into a binary effect vector by put a, if, the, if two verb instances share the same cluster, we assign it a one, otherwise a zero, and we concatenate the 5,000 binary vectors. And then we use Tenimoto similarity measure to predict the similarity. So our results show that our model beats both baselines by, baselines by a substantial margin. Um, one probably here would note is the second baseline supervised model is especially low and I think the reason uh, for this is that um, of, of domain variation from going from, from um, uh, uh, the Wall Street Journal pa uh, trained parser to, a, um, to our domain specific verbs tend to take a performance hit. So that explains why our second baseline is so low. But even then our model, our unsupervised model does particularly well against uh, both of them. Um, so in addition to good alignment with CFs, we also show that these clusters are useful for, 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 for verb semantic representation as well, as, as predicted in, in earlier works. So in conclusion, we have produced an MRF-based unsupervised model for so, so subcategorization frame acquisition. The model predicts SCFs at instance level and does not require a supervised parser. Um, we intrinsically evaluated against two gold standards with promising accuracy results and we extrinsically evaluated our model on a verb similarity task with our model beating both, base, both baselines. And we have, shown also, we have also shown that both verb type level and instance level information really benefits this task. For our future work, we, try, we plan to extend our model to further encode information in our model in terms of nodes and, and, and potentials, um, to, to essentially to, to try to identify more useful contexts. And, um, we evaluate our model in other NLP tasks, such as parsing and word sense disambiguation, and we try to do this in a multilingual setup as well. Thank you, everyone. We have plenty of time for questions. 
it's a quiet afternoon session. Um, I had one question. Um, so you, you're using a window of context around the verb. Um, how big is that window? Uh, so two words before, two words after. Okay, so it's very local. It's very local, yes. Um, does that hurt? Sort of, I mean, oftentimes the arguments might not be even there, right? Like if you have an indirect object that would be outside of that window. Uh, absolutely. Um, so uh, that's, that's the surprising result is that um, you don't actually need to have such a big window to, um, to predict these things. Um, we, did, we did investigate using a larger window. There is a, a performance increase, but only slightly, and it's not very consistent. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's a very good question. Any other questions? Okay, well, let's thank the speaker one more time.